our first time presenting to a large group, so hopefully we don't, we don't feel like that. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, uh, without further ado, uh, we are Mitch and Destiny Calagrassi, hey just like we were just introduced. Um, we are full-time destination elopement and intimate wedding photographers. Um, we're in a little bit of a niche market, um, so we're not we're not necessarily portrait photographers or anything like that. We've kind of weaseled our way into kind of this really happy little spot. Um, we've been lucky enough to be published in a number of magazines and online publications, you know, Green Wedding Shoes, Junebug, and the like. But most recently, um, really, really excited to be one of the Rangefinder Magazine 30 Rising Stars this last year. Yeah. Um, just a little um, bit of, you know, probably why we're here. Um, <laughs> we just got so. to meet Jackie in IRL yeah. Yeah. in real life. That's yeah. what that means. Um. Uh, we like to say that we have a flair for um, more of a cinematic feel. Um, we really adore deep connection, both with our couples and showing off that between our couples. Um, and we take a lot of inspiration from cinema, classic art, photojournalism, chiaroscuro types of painting, um, you know, just a little bit of, of art buffs. And we like to, to pull that emotive quality into our imagery. Um, so this is the absolute most important thing you can take from this. Quote us on it. Um, you, you simply cannot be a photographer without a cat. You have to have at least one. So that's the key. Um, that's the key. No, all, all kidding aside, uh, you know, we, we like dogs too, um, but some, some great artists with cats, Hemingway, George O'Keefe, um, Dali, you have to have some cats. Obviously, this is a joke. We, we work from home, so we love our cats, and we like to bring them into conversation. But you know, animals are always good. Um, but really, we wanted to get started with a little bit of our portfolio. Um, we wanted to kind of familiarize you guys, you know, before we start spouting off about like, oh yeah, this is how we became who we are. Um, we, we have very little control over our environments. Um, so, you know, instead of being able to create like absolutely beautiful, stunning photojournalism or uh, uh, fashion photography is what I meant, you know, with, with great lighting and techniques and curation, we are completely fly by the seat of our pants. Yeah. Uh, we are stuck in situations where we can't control any saying that we hardly know half the people that we're around. We have no control over the outfits or, or the lighting or, or anything like that. Um, so all of these photos that we're about to show you are actually just us being thrown into a situation and you just have to use what you're given. Um, so if we're actually, for instance, this image um, is one of my favorites and this is actually done in what I like to call a wedding factory. Yeah. You know, those like ballrooms with like the crappy carpeting there's and like, like three other weddings going yeah, on at, at the same, same time. time. And there's you like run bride into one, the other bride, bride two. Yeah, just the mess. There's like but four just, photographers there. Yeah, but, but if you have a good window, yeah. and if you really know how to slow down and watch for those in-between moments, you can get imagery similar to this. Yeah. Um, so just kind of flipping through a yeah. similar situation. Um, watching, watching for moments. This is actually just a wedding guest walking yeah. through the fog to try to get to a wedding ceremony, and we just were paying attention. Um, you know, we no, love windows, yeah. framing, window. natural framing paying attention to, to bits and pieces of people, not just like their faces and, and things like that. Paying attention to, you know, sometimes people are like, all right, what do you want us to do next? And it just ends up turning into something. Um, I love this image because you could sometimes look at the shadows and sometimes the shadows are more interesting than the subject. Um, emotion, more emotion. <laughs> Yeah, just kind of being aware of what's going on around you. This was just one of those situations where there was like a cool thing happening, this like sheet thing blowing in the wind, um, and somebody walked by it and, I don't know, thought it was cool. Paying attention in yeah. between Paying moments. attention, that's really This is important. actually a skylight Yeah. in a random ballroom, and the couple was like, what do you want us to do? And I'm like, I don't know, dance. They did. This happened. These are, these are guys that were just talking to one another and they looked exactly alike. Exactly alike. Uh, it's not a mirror, they were just talking to one another. It was really, really strange. So, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, one of my, I don't know, my favorite kind of of mine. Um, this is actually one of my favorites. Yeah. Same wedding, in fact. Yeah, yeah, that was This good. is the server. So if you're paying attention during a wedding or an intimate moment to more than just what you're supposed to, you can create this really wonderful story. Yeah. Um, so, so this is actually just a server, just like zoning out for a hot minute. Yeah, just, just like taking like, a break. Okay, uh, I just set all these tables. Get me out of here. I just want to go, you know, party. So, just being present 
throughout the day. Uh, using unusual light sources is always a wonderful thing. We love playing with neon. Yeah. Neon is fun. Neon is great, especially if you're shooting in a city. Unusual light sources are always wonderful. Once again, paying attention to more than just the bride and groom on a wedding day. So all that to be said. And after going through all of that work, um, we did not curate this style um, overnight. You know, it took a lot of failure. And as much as it's, it's really difficult as somebody in the industry uh, to, to really own up to your failures, we really, really take pride in, in the horrible things that we did trying yeah. to get our business off the ground that maybe like other people might repeat. Um, you know, Churchill said it best, success is walking from failure to failure with no loss of enthusiasm. And if you intend to become or continue to be a full-time, self-employed, creative person, it's inevitable. You're, you're going to fail. And you're going to fail hard. And the difference between a successful person in creative uh, endeavors and someone that just isn't really recognized is picking yourself up, being like, dang, that was a good learning experience. Let's go to the next one. So, so just keep up your enthusiasm. Keep on swimming. That's it. So this is us. Um, we were tiny, tiny little babies, just fresh out of college. This is us in 2010 our in our old apartment. First like, apartment. Super young. Really cute. I mean, we're still cute, but just <laughs> like we're really cute. Um, so yeah, uh, we, we met at school um, in, in university, Indiana University. Anybody heard of Indiana? Uh, that's okay. Um, so we, uh, we got our BFAs in photography um, and uh, school was really great for a lot of things, meeting people um, and getting really great relationships with mm -hmm. our, uh, our professors and other photographers. Um, it didn't really teach us a lot about business or how to become um, real world business professionals yeah. and do our taxes and um, I do have like to that. say though, it was, uh, we can credit it for getting us together because we were yes. the only two Nikon shooters in the entire department. Yep, so yep. naturally that meant, yes, thank you, oh, yeah. thank you. Well, you didn't have, <laughs> we didn't have a lot of options back then, yeah. actually. I mean, it was yeah, Canon, Fuji Nikon. Yeah, Sony are like awesome now. But yeah, yeah. it was just, can oh, what do you shoot, Canon or Nikon? Yeah. So we were the only two Nikon shooters. So everybody's like, well, yeah. naturally Mitch and Destiny are going to get married because they're the only Nikon Yeah, that's actually shooters. why we got married. Yeah. It's, it's, it was much cheaper to put our we can, uh, So you can thank Nikon together. for a successful marriage. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, Nikon. <laughs> and everyone. Um, but at, uh, our first year out of college, we really tried everything under the sun to try to get our business off the ground. And, you know, it was literally like throwing paint at a wall and just hoping that something would stick. We had no idea what we were doing. We had no money. And we had very, very little strategy. Um, we're just like, okay, there's a thing. Pursue it. So, which is great. If you have a lot of moxie and a lot of creative drive. But, you know. Yeah, so... Moxie's great, but without a lot of intentionality, um, you, you can have a lot of expensive learning experiences. Um, so we spent a lot of time trying uh, and failing our first year. We, we had so much drive to do a lot of stuff, but we had no direction. Um, and, and, and that cost us a little bit. Luckily, I mean, we're here, we're still like alive. Yeah. Um, we got we got through it, but yeah, and that's why we're here talking to you today. So you can maybe not make so many costly mistakes yeah, like yeah. we did. So a big thing that like you is one of the things that we failed at early on was uh, giving a lot of discounts and discounting our work um, and ourselves. Um, and one of the ways we did we did that we were you know broke college kids. Um, we we spent a lot of time on Groupon, um, mm -hmm. buying you know uh, things and groceries. meals and groceries and Groupon was great. I don't even know if it's a thing anymore, <laughs> um, but uh, we used them so much that they somehow found out that we were a business mm -hmm. and started sending us a bunch of uh, emails like, "Hey, um, advertise through us, and we can um, launch we, your career." Yeah, launch level. your career, and so so we we did, uh, <laughs> and we started to do some like portrait sessions through Groupon, and. What it really did was it made each, we sold a ton of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, sold, we were like, whoa, wow, like kickstart the career. But what happened was we made like 20 bucks a shoot through, <laughs> through this like Groupon thing. So, um, it, it, and we learned what burnout was. I mean, we were like for the first time, cause we were so passionate and so we wanted to, you yeah, know. we were gonna work night and day, burn the midnight oil. We were gonna give yeah. everybody three times as much time as we promised them, four times as many photos as we promised them. And then we hit a wall. Yeah, we made no money. And we got bitter. 
and that's, that's never a good place to be. You can exhaust yourself in this business so easily, and we learn that immediately. If you are spinning your wheels, not making money, undervaluing yourself, and trying to give your heart and soul to people, you will burn out. And burnout is very real, and it's very, very difficult to dig yourself out of. Yeah. So this was, this was another, um, you know, we, we, we needed to learn how to set boundaries. Um, and so after the Groupon deal, uh, we decided to give discounting another go um, through, through our Instagram this time. Uh, and, you know, we had this new fancy Instagram business account. We were so cool. Uh, but so we didn't really think through the f fine print through doing this discount. And we ended up, nobody saw it except one of our brides that we already we're already talking booked, to. Or we're talking to. Hadn't booked yet. Just talking to. And so she comes to us and is like, hey, hey, hey. Can, can I have that discount? Even though she was going to book us. Um, so we just ended up losing, losing out on money. money um, and that's bad. That, <laughs> there's bad. No, yeah, nothing fun about that. Yeah. Um, Throwing around discounts willy-nilly is kind of something that we, we like to caution people against, especially when you're getting started. There are a lot of promotional things that you can do other than just being like, hey, you know, I promise you don't have to pay me as much to do that awesome job. Um, we've learned other ways, other better ways um, that, that really, really kind of gets you past this whole like discounts breeding discounts philosophy. Um, you know, there's an old adage that, you know, your, your cheapest customer is going to be the toughest one. And it's true. Um, really, like when you get to the point where you're already discounting your work to someone, they're already seeing you as less of a value. Um, so they're going to want more out of you. They're going to want you to work harder for the little that they're paying you. Um, and, and we found that that that's really what it is. Um, if you start telling people, hey, we only have to pay, you know, this much money off, uh, other people are like, oh, wait, you, you discounted that person, so I want a discount. And then I want a discount. And then I want a discount. And then it just turns into this whole culture of discounting. Value your work. Value your time. And just be very, very cautious and careful when you're sitting here throwing around like promotions. You're not Walmart. You know, you're not having like yeah. a one day sale. Value your work as an artist yeah, and, and neither, really represent that. Yeah, and you don't want to be that. You don't want to be the, the Walmart photographer. You don't necessarily want to let every, mm -hmm. everything that comes along in. Um, you know, that being said, I mean, there are promotional discounting things that you still can use. Not saying discounts are all entirely bad, but just make sure that if you are discounting yourself or if you're doing something for free or if you're doing something for a friend or a family, that you really get something out of it. Yeah. You know, we've done things all the time where we're just like, oh, yeah, well, we'll just we'll crash with a friend instead of, you know, taking the full full travel value. Yeah. Um, why? Because I know for a fact this amazing wedding that's like on the edge of a cliff in Ireland is going to be marketing fodder, you know. So make sure it's worth something to you. Make sure you're setting your limitations. Make sure you're comfortable and read the fine print. Just go through, read the fine print. You'll be fine. <laughs> You know, other things that we've learned um, to do instead of discounting is, and it seems like it goes without saying, but treat your clients like your family. Yeah. You know, when people sign with us, we're literally talking to them all the time. I got a phone call when we were on vacation in Ireland from a bride who was so sad because her brother wasn't coming. And she just called me, like me. I'm not her, I, I mean, I am her friend now, but at the time, you know, I'm not her friend, I'm not her family, but she thought to call me because I know what it's like to experience weddings. You know, we're trying to make ourselves indisposable to these people so that they feel loved, they, we build that trust. And so that by the time we're leaving their wedding, like we were just at a wedding a couple of days ago and our couple was hugging us and saying like, don't leave, drink with us, like put your cameras down, it's yeah. cool, like we have an open bar. And I'm just like, I, girl, I gotta get your photos home safe. Yeah. Like, you know, so, so just treat your clients like they're your family and they will turn around and tell everyone about you. Yeah. I can't tell you how many weddings we've been to where we get to party with the bride at the reception because her friend got married and wanted to hire us because we we were following her around with a bottle of water saying like, girl, you need to sit down. Like, let's make these awesome photos. Let's give you a break. Let's give you a hug. Do you need anything? You know, that goes further than any discount will. Yeah. And it also, I mean, it, it makes you build this trust with, with your clients that um, is really important. Uh, photographing somebody honestly, mm -hmm. especially on their wedding day. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on, so they have to be comfortable around you. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, um, Focusing on your SEO, focusing on getting your website, you know, built well, 
and searchable online is so important. Um, we actually work with a really, really good web developer. She is amazing. She's kind of taken a lot of the reins from that because honestly, we are horrible at technology. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, but getting your work out there on social media and getting it out there on blogs, um, are it's all free. I mean, just. Just put your work out there. Social media is a beautiful thing. <laughs> Just put it out there and make sure you're curating whatever it is to your target market. And, and that helps way more than just trying to give your services away for free. And lastly, and the most importantly, um, what has worked instead of like discounting um, is just forming a relationship with other vendors. And, you know, for, if you're a wedding photographer, you're photographing flowers, you're photographing a cake, you're photographing these tangible things that will go away once you're using them. Um, these people, these artists, these, these wedding artists are looking to you to build their portfolio. You know, if this florist installs this giant arch, this arch is going to go in the trash later in the evening. But you're the one person that got to document their art. So if you're like, hey, you know, florist. I think you're great. Here's some photos of your work from that wedding that we worked on together. You know, is there anything else you need from me? The very next bride that says, hey, do you know of a cool photographer? They're like, oh yeah, those guys. Because not only are they nice, yeah. they're also going to provide me with the images of my artwork as well. And so I can't tell you how many times we get weddings just because we have vendor friends, frienders. Um, who, oh. <laughs> frienders. Yeah, that was good. Uh, that, that are like, no, we just simply want to work with her yeah. and, and, and him because they're going to treat us Mostly nice. We're going to work together and it's, it's going to be great. Yeah. And that also, I mean, that goes, uh, that goes for locally. I mean, your venues locally and everywhere, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've we've gotten calls from you know people in other states and stuff. Oh yeah. From from vendors, so that I mean that can that goes for everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. So um, talking about intentionality, uh, that's it, it, it's really really important to uh, try to design your life to support your goals. Mm -hmm. um, we when we first started out uh, a couple years after maybe um, mm -hmm. we kind of had our business rolling um, and we were like okay like how do we take everything to the next level how do we be that like new cool we want to legit yeah we want to be legit we want to seem legit um, so we were like hey let's uh, let's run a studio space Des was doing a bunch of boudoir at the time mm -hmm. I was doing like a, a little commercial work um, and we were like yeah that's a that's a great way to uh, you know, seem seem really legit. Have our name on a sign. Um, so, and have a studio space. And have a studio space. Yeah. So at the same time, what our goal really was for our wedding business was to travel and be kind of free of where we were. I mean, we live in Indiana. Mm -hmm. um, our, our markets not very pretty in Indiana. Love it, you, it, Indiana. It can be. Yeah, no. it can be. It's uh, we have mixed feelings about India, but <laughs> obviously the people are great. The scenery not so hot. Yeah, sometimes. I mean, you know, corn. Corn's pretty. I mean, I you digress. know. Anyway, so <laughs> so so we wanted we wanted to travel and we wanted to see the world and we wanted to do destination weddings and elopements. Um, and and we had this studio kind of keeping us keeping us down. I mean, it was kind of expensive for us at the time. Yeah. It was like uh, an anchor. I mean, we wanted to be out in, out in the world, experiencing new cultures. But then we we're like, oh, but we were supposed to have a studio space, and this is a horrible idea. And we have this big money suck where, um, it, and it doesn't align with our goals. Like I don't know. So intentionality. Not to say don't own a studio space. Right. Own that's, a studio if, space if that's where totally. where your heart is and that's where you're going. But what we're saying we is are, we are that's not where we were going. We were going in the opposite direction yeah. of that. Yeah. So our obviously, like our decision, as it says, um, did not create more business. It hindered it. Um, so the studio space, it, it caused a lot of fin uh, financial strain. Um, strain. And we discovered that we didn't even like working in a studio space, even for editing, even for you know just hanging out. We were there like a handful of times a week, so uh, yeah, we just it, it hindered business. So what we learned from the fact that we were not doing a very good job of of setting up our lives for our goals and our success, um, we we really decided that we needed to just scrap this idea and just turn around and curate our lifestyle to support our end game. Um, so what we wanted to do, and this is not right for everybody, but you know, when we want to travel the world, we wanted to see different cultures, we wanted to shoot in a different place like every week, which I know sounds crazy, but hey, we do it. Um, you know, we actually had to adapt everything, our living expenses, our, our, our lifestyle, everything to be fly by the seat of our pants. For instance, um, just what's right for us is we actually own a tiny, tiny house in Indiana near family. It's home base. 
We can afford it with our eyes closed. Um, we also have used cars. We're super not cool. We drive like a Subaru and a Fiat with a dent in the side. So like, you know, we're, we're not like, you know, trying to like roll up with these cool cars. Um, you know, we're actually putting a hold on, on starting a family just because, you know, keeping living expenses low and, and our priority right now is travel. And, you know, we have two low maintenance cats. You saw them earlier. Um, instead of getting like dogs, I love dogs, but you know, yeah, you can't travel a lot when you, you know dogs. we're light packers we're super sticklers for self-care all of these things help support this kind of like crazy travel lifestyle that we want to see our lives in which is the opposite of everyone else in our lives right now like the opposite everybody's starting families everybody's settling down and we're just like how can we pull more out of our lives to be more wash and wear um so it, it's kind of hard it's a difficult thing to do but but if you have a lifestyle that you want to live support it with everything. Um, we ended up doing a similar situation with our pricing structure. So instead of you know complicating things, we really just bare bones to everything. Um, we, we kept it really, really simple. We keep it really easy. And we keep it to the point where it's like, oh yeah, okay, so you're getting married. And, and I keep using Ireland, so I'm just going to say Ireland again. You're getting married in Ireland. Okay, that's great. Well, this is what it is. And oh, I mean, if you want to add things to it, that's fine. But if you want us, this is what it is. Yeah, and we kind of had to uh, determine our pricing just on like where where we were in the world and how much mm -hmm. you know. It's it's different for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, you definitely don't want to undervalue yourself. Yeah. But we do basically a, a super simple a la carte system where it's it's almost like oh okay well it's it's that I don't have to jump through hoops I don't have to go through a lot mm -hmm. it's just oh okay I want you you are this much dollars okay here's my dollars let's go to Ireland yeah uh, for some reason it just seemed to have worked keeping it super streamlined just like our lifestyle we kept our pricing streamlined as well and it just really has helped um, our couples and our clients understand what it means to get us out there um, and honestly don't give in to the pressures of, of other people um, thinking that you need to do X Y and Z to be successful that was the biggest hurdle with this this epic failure of you know doubling our ex, uh, overhead and expenditures. It, it, it was just because of peer pressure. It's like you're not you're not cool unless you get a studio space. So <laughs> you're not cool unless you're you know rocking the newest camera. Or you're yeah. not cool unless X Y and Z. Insert whatever pressure you have. If you're comfortable with where you are and you're really pushing yourself to the next level, keep doing you. Don't do someone else, do you? Right. Do what's good for you. Find out what you know works, and, and that's fine. Totally cool. So over blogging, um, <laughs> this is yeah. That's that's basically what we did. Uh, every every single Thank wedding, you, every engagement, um, we uh, we gave them a blog post. Uh, we showed all of our work rather than curating it. We shot forty weddings in our second year. And 40 weddings plus 40 blogs is more than a full-time job. That's like a double full-time yeah. job. Um, blogging takes me days. Um, so adding that to your workflow of 40 weddings is absolutely impossible. Yeah, so we were, I mean, we were showing work on the blog that, that we didn't necessarily want to do again. Mm -hmm. um, and we were showing people and, and just situations and work that we didn't feel like our, was our best. We just put it out there because we kind of felt we owed it to people mm -hmm. and that like, yeah, we should do that, right? Like, I don't know, it was, uh, and it just got us more work that we didn't want to take. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, actually, we. It was just talked about a couple of, uh, you know, like an hour ago. It's just like curate your website, yeah. curate things Super that you want to important. shoot again. Um, and that was, we didn't know that. We didn't attend this speech an hour ago, yeah, yeah. you know, I five years ago. Yeah, you know, where, we, where all of a sudden we were just like, okay, we shot a thing. We got to show everybody the thing. And then we were like, well, we don't want to shoot that again. But people were identifying with, say, you know, a super traditional bride who was very concerned with the way that they, you know, looked and presented themselves, and they were very uptight, and they didn't really want to kiss their husband because it would mess up their lipstick, and, and we didn't want to work with that. Obviously, we like people with dirty hems. Yeah. We love dresses that get messy. We love brides who barefootedly climb up a cliff face and are like, oh, oh, oh I ripped it. That's all right. Let's just keep going. I'm only going to wear it once. Yeah. You know, those are our kind of people. And, and we learned that you absolutely need to just show those kinds of people. Um, you know, one of the things uh, that also kind of hurt us with blogging every single wedding um, was that it kind of bogged us down and it caused us to go late. Um, so we were actually ruining deadlines because we were 
spending so much time blogging, which is mm -hmm. kind of, in and of itself, a selfish thing. Right. You know, because it, it's, it's uh, padding our portfolio. Right. But that's and not it fair. Inhibited the client experience from getting right. stuff late, and it, you yeah. Know. That's not treating clients like family. That's you right. know just putting serving your clients on the back burner. Um, and it actually took us a really ta long time to phase out that promise of blogging. You know, oh, you know, book with us, and you're going to get a wedding, uh, a blog post uh, like a week after your wedding. And you know, it got to the point where people were like, oh, well, you didn't blog my wedding. Does that mean it was bad? And yeah, it took forever to get out of that, out from under that. Just don't do that. That's a horrible idea. <laughs> um, but yes, as we were saying. Um, firm believers in curating, curating your website for the kind of work that you want to do, the kind of work that you love, the kind of work that you're passionate about, and the kind of couples that you're trying to attract. Um, you know, for instance, if, if, you, if you hate shooting in the woods, and if you have severe allergies or something, and you never want to shoot there again, don't post beautiful images of weddings in the woods. You know, post the photos uh, indoors or in the city or, you know, whatever else you want to do again. Because um, people are attracted to what they see. Um, so I actually, in every single one of my emails um, that, of people who inquire with us, I actually mention like, hey, you know, this is what we love. We actually tell our clients, first email, hey, congratulations. We're so excited you emailed us. Thank you so much for your kind words. We're super excited to get to know you. We love couples who are not afraid to just make out in public. We love couples who are willing to run around in the dirt and get their hems dirty. We love couples who are not afraid to spend time just being quiet and alone together on their wedding day and being fully present, being vulnerable. If these things scare you, we are not a good fit for you because we're going to put you in a vulnerable place. We're going to get you dirty. We're going to make you make out. We're going to poke fun. We're probably going to drop some kind of expletive at some point because we have potty mouths, no, you know. Absolutely well. And, and we're, we're probably going to gonna, and we're probably going to text you things that we think, you know, hey, this is a funny meme made me think of you. Um, if those things scare you, we we we're probably a horrible fit for you. We will we will ruin your day. <laughs> uh, so so we're actually literally trying to scare people away with our first email. The moment that we get a response back from that client that's like, heck yeah, I'm ready. That's when we, I'm fired up, already, already creativity brewing, already excited. Um, so just making sure that whatever you do, curate for that ideal client. Um, just honestly, you know, make sure that people understand who you are, how you make art, not just that you make art, how you make art. Um, and the right client will see themselves in your work. They're really going to identify themselves with the kind of people that you're putting out there. And honestly, your website is not just proof that you don't suck. Because I feel like a lot of people treat their website as, hey, look what I can do. Look, 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 I don't suck. I you exist. Know, I exist. I have a presence online. You know, treat it, yeah, treat it like a portfolio, like your best work, like work you want to keep doing. And, and avoid the urge to just overshare everything. Curate things down. If you think your blog post of 80 images is too much, curate it down to 50. Yeah. Just it's turn it into a really, really beautiful, wonderful uh, sum up in, of what you interpret a couple to be. Yeah, so um, when we started out early on, we took a lot of bad advice. Um, and, and that, I mean, that had a lot of detrimental things to, to our work and our, our business. So we took a lot of workshops early on. Um, and they seemed, they seemed cool, but they didn't, really, they didn't really benefit us in the way that we work. Um, so they wanted us to change things um, that we actually, we thought we were doing pretty well. Um, and, and silence and individuality that we had in, in our work and in our business, um, rather than embrace what was good about us uh, and, and, and roll with it. So that, that set us back a lot of years. Um, and it really made us miss out on a lot of opportunities um, w with couples and uh, things, situations that could have been really awesome. Uh, so yeah. Uh, you know, just watch out for gimmicky sounding workshops and uh, things that are just another opportunity to sell presets, actions, flashcards, 
further online guides. And uh, that's not to say, there's nothing wrong with those things. Right. Those things are awesome. Good friends of ours sell their presets. Good friends totally. of ours and sell their online totally guides. Cool. And they're awesome tools. But if they're using workshops just as a means to sell you those things, chances are they're not really giving a damn about your self-growth. They're really just trying to make money off of you. Yeah. And 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 that's that's great. But when you're first starting off, like for instance, a workshop that we took told us to change our name. And it's like, well, it's my last name. I don't yeah. know what else to do I don't do mean, about I know it. it's weird. But... Yeah, I, but you know. Um, it caused us to be so self-conscious about our work um, unnecessarily that, that we literally like kind of crawled into a hole and didn't do anything with our business for like six months yeah. because they didn't care about us. They wanted us to just buy into whatever brand of Kool-Aid they were selling and we didn't like Kool-Aid. So no, there's like, that. But we hear this all the time. Liquor. People take workshops that, that set them back instead of propel them forward. So just do your research. Find educators who literally give a crap about what it is you are and, and who you want to be and who will actually spend some time talking to you. Um, because honestly, there are amazing educators out there. There are amazing, amazing people out in the world who are there just to want to make you get better. And find those people. Latch on to those people. Become friends with those people. Um, because honestly, like workshops and meetups have been the most paramount thing to us yeah. um, in our business. Um, we've been introduced to the closest people in our lives who are other photographers and creatives because of workshops, meetups, things like this, coming to conferences where you can get on the same level with people who understand your struggle and understand things. Yeah. Um, you know, honestly, uh, one of the, the most uh, intimate examples that I have um, is this last year my father passed away and my father passed away during a wedding. I was in the middle of photographing a wedding when I got a phone call um, and it was very sudden. It was not expected. Um, so right in the busiest season, in the busiest week, during the busiest month of the year, I found out my father passed away. And it's like, well, how do you go from there? You're, you're a once in a lifetime event photographer and you already have your travel booked. Right. What do you do? Um, our community and, and our, our nearest and dearest literally jumped on the bullhorn immediately. I didn't even know this. You know, obviously I'm with my family, I'm distraught, what have you. Mitch is trying to be my support system. And I find out later that I have message boards of people being like, we need to, you know, think about the Caligrassis right now. Who's available? Are you willing to shoot their wedding for free? Are you willing to, you know, grab a, a plane ride out to New York City to photograph yeah. this wedding for her? We need to pull together as a community and really support this couple right now. I was floored. <laughs> absolutely floored. And it's not because we didn't anything, you know, for them to to want to do that for us. It's just be a kind person, be a support system to them. And all of a sudden, you're going to have this amazing network of creative people who are wanting to support you. Um, so so community over competition, I know, is overused, but it's, it's really a thing. Super, super true. The more that we have wanted to be in community with people rather than treating other people like our wedding competition, the more that we have just been blessed in spades. Um, so I can't say highly enough. Yeah. Find your tribe, love them hard, and, and, and support one another. It's huge. Absolutely huge. Um, and of yeah. course. So, yeah, guys, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> now, cow. Uh, lastly, you know, uh, who would we be without a Star Wars quote? Because, you know, Star Wars. Um, Yoda, like Churchill, understands that, you know, we're only as strong as the failures that we overcome. Um, I always like to encourage people to keep their head up and to keep your mind in open, your feet on the ground, and, and really you can't lose. Um, you know, wear your failures like a badge of honor. Be proud of the fact that like you sold portrait sessions on Groupon 10 years ago. You know, just be like super about it. And, and honestly, they will just continue to cause you to improve. Um, you know, the last little bit of, of thing that we've learned is honestly, the moment that you feel like you're winning all the time, the moment you're like, oh man, I'm above failures. I don't really fail anymore because I'm winning all the time. That's when you're gonna grow stagnant. That's when you're going to be the same. That's why you're going to be like that guy that used to do that really cool thing like five years ago. And then people are like, oh man, he hasn't really done anything in a while. Yeah. Why? Because you just kind of rest on your laurels. Keep failing. Keep taking chances. Keep hurting yourself. <laughs> keep doing whatever it is you think is too hard or too scary or too risky. And you'll become something eventually after a lot of uphill battle. So. Yeah. Cool, guys. Thank Thanks. Ooh, ooh.